Third, if I can't, I'm not gonna try to be a hero. Although I look like a hero, I'm not. You know what time it is. It's time to add some accessories to the camper. Let's jump right into it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tags. This series is all about the must-have accessories and modifications to your camper. All easy DIY stuff. The intense solar panel, all that other plumbing modifications will come later on in the series. But today we're just doing some general modifications. Starting off with a carpet runner, a doormat. Then we have some five pound fire extinguishers. So this fire extinguisher is really the only one that comes with the camper. It's not, not sufficient. So I'm gonna put a big one there. I'm gonna put a big one right in the master bedroom right in this corner and then i'm gonna move that other one outside then moving on to the master bedroom we have a tv to hang and that's about it let's jump into today's video so guys if you know anything about me i've been camping for the last two years i did 24,000 miles off grid in my last camper Family's growing, need a bigger camper, so I'm doing all the same modifications um, if they were good, and I'm just going over what I do and why I do it. Now, a little context. It's a family of five plus a big 80-pound dog. Now, let's go over why a carpet runner is good. Firstly, you're tracking dirt in and out outside. The linoleum, hate to say it, but the dirt just sits on there, so everything gets dirty. The carpet, the dirt goes inside, especially with the dog. So it's still there, except it's much better and feels cleaner longer. So that's why there's a carpet runner. So let's throw this down. Well, that didn't work. Alrighty, I'm gonna put some weights on this side so we can uncurl. Then I'm gonna open the doormat and put that in place. While I'm waiting for that to flatten out, I'll show you how to secure it afterwards. Let's open the fire extinguishers and show you what we're working with. All right, guys, so let's talk fire extinguishers. Now, I normally boondock in the middle of nowhere, so it's like 30 or 40 minutes for someone to find me if anything goes wrong. Uh, that being said, if my camper catches on fire, first, I need to make sure my family is safe outside of the camper. Second, I need to try save the camper. Third, if I can't, I'm not gonna try to be a hero. Although I look like a hero, I'm not. So, if you know anything about fire extinguishers, A, B, C fire extinguishers put out all fires. A only does certain things, B only does certain things, and C only does certain things. So that's why you get an A, B, C fire extinguisher. Now, I told you I'm gonna put these two places. One in the bedroom, because the bedroom does not have a door to the outside. So if there were a fire in between the bedroom and the exit, I have a fire extinguisher. There is an emergency exit in my bedroom, but I have kids that sleep in the back of the camper. So I'm not jumping out the window to go around, to go back in if anything were to happen. If it's big enough that I can't run to my kids, we got big issues. But that being said, the bedroom's also close to the kitchen. The kitchen is where the fire is. So that's why I'm putting this right in my bedroom. The other one I'm gonna put right at the entrance slash exit where the current fire extinguisher is. And the current fire extinguisher, I will move to the outdoor kitchen, the other place open flames are. So to me, that's just logical. Again, do I think I can save the camper? That's not my goal. My goal is safety and then we'll figure it out. One thing I do not do when I camp is I do not unhook my car because we're always in the middle of nowhere and we go to those places to see that place. We don't go to those places to get in the car and drive around. So that is something to keep in mind. That's why I have more fire extinguishers than needed because I also need to put the fire out or slow it down while I unhook the car. You know, anyways, yeah, cool. Let's put these in place. So I'm going to hook this. I don't want it to hang, but I want it to be tight on uh, the hook because that's how I'm gonna secure it. Now I'm screwing it to this wall because it's thicker than this. So it's stronger. There we go. So this shouldn't move unless I hit extreme bumps on the road, but we got this on here so you know nothing will really happen. If I do find it falling off a bit 
uh, more than I would like. I will sort that out at that point. Now it doesn't take up much more space than the other one. Uh, I'm gonna do the same principle here, except with this mat in place. So it'll actually hold the mat from moving. All right, so there is that fire extinguisher. Here is the other one, all good. I will mount this one outside when I do the outdoor accessories. Now, since my kids sleep in the bunkhouse, watching a movie here would be nice, but sometimes the kids need some quiet. We've got the upgraded bedroom from our micro mini, which has an area for a TV, but no TV. So here's my TV, here's a TV mount. I'm gonna figure that out. Alrighty guys, so this wall is hollow, right? And this TV is heavy. There's a beam right here. So we can either mount the TV here, but let's see where the door goes. No, so we can't, because the door goes there. So that wasn't well planned on Winnebago's part, but that's fine. So then we need to mount it here. Now we'll see if we can find a beam here. So there would be something here around the window, sorry. Um, obviously I can't see through the wall. So I have to assume it's coming up here. So let's figure out how we want this TV mounted and we'll go from there. All right, so I went with a 24 inch TV. Uh, one would say, why don't you just use an iPad? And that's a good question. So if the TV is mounted here, then it can stay like this. Um, we'll figure it out. I think it's better to see if I can get this metal beam here and then we're gonna, use it at an angle like this keeping in mind that when the door is open so this is really how the tv needs to be so i'm gonna put the mount on the back of the tv and see how we can manipulate it now one thing you never want to do when screwing the bracket onto the mount is use a power drill you want to screw it in because these screws are going towards the screen right sometimes the screws are too long for your screen they have a backstop in there, but you want to make sure, if you use a power drill, you'll just go straight in and you won't feel it. And then the screws will break the screen and then your TV's all ruined. So with this one, it's all good. Now in the perfect world, you use a little Loctite because this one is driving down the road and vibrations may make this thing fall off, which I may do on a trip, depending if I see how it goes. But now, we're gonna be able to put the mount on and see how we can manipulate it. This beam is right here. So this seems like the best place. Keep in mind, you can always flip this around to do that. So that actually seems like the ideal place for this mount. Now, it comes with these three inch lag bolts, lag screws. Do not use these. Guys, remember everything you screw into this wall the screw needs to be the shorter than the, the thickness of the wall. Otherwise, you got a lot of screw holes on the outside. Anyways, I'm going to figure this out and get back to you. Alrighty, and the TV is up. So, one thing to know, when the TV is mounted like this and the weight's here, bouncing down the road, it will rip out the wall. So what you want to do is, when you're traveling, is put the TV as flush as you can to the wall so they're and close to the mount as possible. So right now this TV will sit like this when we're going to be using it, but when we're not going to be using it, I will show you what I'm going to do. This is how I think I'm going to travel with the TV. Maybe I'll put a lip here. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but yeah, looks good. It's going to be perfect watching TV in here. Now let's go back to the carpet runner and I'll show you how I secure those down. Alrighty, now that this is, hopefully, yeah, it's not as good, but it's fine. What I've done is I've gone ahead and ordered another one. It arrives on Wednesday and then it will come down here. Two reasons for the runner. One is the dirt. Two is we winter camp. As you can hear, the furnace just kicked on. But the floor right now is much colder on my feet than the carpet. So it will also retain heat a bit more. Um, ideally, if we could have matched this carpet but right now we're gonna use this I've got another one coming but let me show you how I secure these because that one I'm just gonna leave loose 
This one I'm actually going to tape to the ground. So what I have here is grippers for rugs. Let me just put you where you can see my pretty face. All right, so it's pretty simple. It's just double-sided tape. You can stick it under the rug and then it sticks down to the ground. So I'm gonna install this on this rug. So there it is. You know what, I'm not gonna install it. I'll check in on the next video when the other rug is arrived. That way I can plan them out nicely. So I will wait to install it because this may have to come back more or leftover. So this looks like one nice rug. So I'll do that later. So it's Warwick in the future, a couple days ahead of time because I just got the other floor runner in. So that's how that will go. Let me show you how the double-sided tape works. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. But just in case, what we're going to do is see if it's going to hold this bump down. So then you can use these at home as well when you got stubborn rugs, right? Okay, so there's the rug side and then the floor side. So keep that in mind. So it is winter, so I turned the furnace on because the... Uh, heat from the furnace does radiate on the floor so it will help with adhesion also the furnace heat comes out right here alrighty so that's how that looks and I have lined mine up with this line in the faux flooring so I'm gonna stick this one it looks like it's already even just having this stuck here it holds it down compared to look at that so love it already. I'm gonna do this to all four and then I'll check in with you. Alrighty, in the spirit of saving you money, those corners are all gonna have two because I believe that carpet will have the most traffic. These ones, since I don't have more, I'm just gonna put two or well, one on each corner and I'll let you know if it has any effect because maybe you only need a little bit. I can't get hold of my wife, so you know whatever way I do it, I'm gonna be wrong. So I've got a gap in here. If I close the gap, I don't like it, but I'm gonna have this gap. It will make it worse for the vacuum, but it looks better, but I know I'm gonna get yelled at. But if I did it the other way, I'd also get yelled at. So, all right, and it's done. These things are crazy. There definitely is a rug side and a floor side because I put the rug side on the floor and the other way and it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick as well, so keep note. One thing I also thought of sticking my last one in there, don't know why I didn't think of this, just makes me look like an idiot, is I could have just cut it in half. But anyways, back to editing this video. Oh yeah guys, one thing I did double check before I stuck it all down is that the slide actually doesn't interfere with these rugs or the rugs don't get into the slide mechanism. So you wanna put the rug down, make sure it's thin enough to do this and go back and forth to make sure it's fine before you do what I just did. All right, so last thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put these next to the bed. I've showed these in a previous video, but these are just simple well, USB lights if you need a little night light. So I will keep these in the drawers here in case I need a night light. This is a different one that has a switch on off. So I'll put two here for my wife. But guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. A short one, maybe not a short one, I don't know. But the next video, I need to move this camper to my driveway and I'm gonna do a lot of the outdoor stuff. Not all of it, because it's still cold and I can't do some of it with it being cold, but I will get that going. So thanks a lot for tuning in. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and until next time, I'll see you then.